12.30 is the time to take note of. Of course, that is when we get underway with our meeting at uh, Hollywood uh, Bets Grave, where we're in Durban for Sunday racing. We're on the turf track, and uh, that uh, looks to be a competitive afternoon that, that awaits us. So the race number one is a juvenile, a maiden juvenile plate, and that's over the 1,000 meters. We've lost, unfortunately, Farney Bronkhorst's charges. He had three to raid at Durban, and the first one was the Valley Ava, who's improving with each and every outing. That will be a non-runner, leaving us a field of uh, seven. Before we go any further and turn it to our man with his bipod selections, Daryl Marie, it's a time to welcome uh, Mr. Burrows. A very warm welcome to you, Darren. Haven't had a chance to publicly congratulate you on your uh, latest exploits as far as uh, your tipping for a waiter to win goes. Yes, thank you very much. You know, yesterday was, well, not yesterday. We are recording this on Friday. So on Thursday, we caught the pick six paying 40,000 rand for a two and a half thousand rand layout. And um, the best bets both arrived. Daryl and I agreed on uh, a couple of runners that arrived. So um, it was a good day. Now let's kick off in race one. I thought the horse to beat was the race horse Kalahari Roller. Um, this horse should take some beating on that good debut behind Grove Field. But I do have respect for this horse Luhamba Pambili. Um, it's a Danon Platina out of Simply Royal, and that Simply Royal family was very good. So this horse could go very well, and I see on World Sports betting 5 to 1 into 33 to 10. So those are the two I would focus on. The other money horse is the Mikado, number two. Okay, so that is uh, first choice, the three, and then of interest will be the eight and the two, that is Blahaba Pambili and uh, the Mikado, respectively. Mr. Bar uh, Mr. Uh, Marie, very good morning to you, and uh, welcome to our preview for Graver. We're on the uh, turf track, and this is the Ram Narayan, a Suresh uh, Bogwatha V maiden juvenile plate over the 1,000 meters. I do believe that they often uh, do uh, honor their long-serving, uh, I take it this is their long-serving staff. In race number one, I think you're in agreement with Mr. Burrows. Cecil, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, in the first leg of the bar part, I am happy to bank number three, Kalahari Roland. Uh, you can see... A promising debut. Uh, Grovefield came to the track with a bit of a reputation first time out, and he only found one to get for him on that occasion. Now, Grovefield had the benefit of having one run, so he had the experience, and it was quite some distance back to the third place runner. I've just logged on to the Hollywood Bets uh, Syndicate website. I'm going to quote what they say with regards to number seven, Lahamba Pambili. Um, he is a forward type and shows speed in his work. Uh, if he's not too green, he's expected to be competitive. So he is coming to the track having shown ability at, back at home and uh, they expect a forward run on his behalf. So if you're not happy bankering number three in the opening leg, I'd, I'd suggest including the eight. Right, let's go to the uh, bipod uh, selections uh, for uh, Mr. Marie. It is a scratch the four Valieva in race number one, and it is bank of the three. And then in the penultimate leg, race number five, leg five, also bank of the three, and uh, that is the uh, Vianza bomb. That is an outlay of 250 Rand. 12.30 is when racing gets underway at Hollywood Bets. So, Gravel, where we're racing on the turf. Right, it is the Moody Dean uh, and uh, Gumby Prince, a juvenile, played for Phillies over the 1,000 metres. We've lost uh, the five stars and bras, yet another Farnley Bronkhorst intended a raider that is not making it through to uh, Durban on a Sunday. Leaves us a field of a nine, and having a look at uh, the uh, betting, the seven golden chandelier, a good winner recently at uh, Turfontaine, is at 17 to 10. Number 10, she's a machine, is at 72, having been shortened in from 4 to 1. 11 to 2 out from 4 to 1 goes to 3, magic view. It is 13 to 2 about the two. Pull a fast one. Tens and better by those quoted runners. So we've got the scratching of the five stars and bras. We're now left with the field of a nine. And uh, the uh, winner that obviously stands out, one we saw firsthand, was the seven golden chandelier. There's also another winner in the form of the tennis. She's a machine. Sean Veal retains the right for Stu Ferry. Uh, form uh, from Joburg uh, should carry weight in this race or do you see it otherwise? Um I think her experience is going to be a big factor, yes, yeah, Cecil. You know, this filly, uh, last time out, she absolutely flew out the pens. Unlike her penultimate start behind her stable companion, Almond C, this time round she had the w race won at the start. So I think she is going to be suited by the Gravel uh, circuits. 
you know, she's going to be out on her bicycle and probably the one to catch leading into the straight. So um, she is uh, one of my inclusions of here uh, just because of the gate speed I saw last time out. So I do like her. Unfortunately, my first pick is out, number five stars and bras. So uh, I've opted to bank her, I mean, back her up with number two over here, pull a fast one. Now, by, now we'll know if that latest form line has been franked with Kalahari, Kalahari Rolo in the first race yes. representing the Growfield uh, run. Uh, and in her two starts to date, she hasn't been disgraced. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been showing good pace and then just... Uh, uh, not really uh, uh, just lacking a finishing effort but I think with Richard in the arms uh, getting three kilograms from it, the favorite she could be a factor of year so I've just gone for numbers two and seven two and seven for a Daryl in that uh, first leg of the PA let's cross over to Mr. Burrows now golden chandelier I did get a word about the uh, winning chances just before they jumped, so it was a bit too late for me, but one well, and I'm sure there's a one or two more wins. What do you do on Sunday in race number two? Well, let's just touch on our winning bet uh, the other day. I said uh, before race one's preview had happened on Thursday. It was actually Wednesday at Gravel, where both our best bets and bankers in the pick six, Sundance Kid and La Premier, arrived, and the pick six paid 40,000 rand. So, well done to the weighted to win team there. Uh, race two, I thought a horse like Golden Chandelier, one of the leading lights, a very speedy filly, as well as she's a machine. Now, obviously, you look at the time, it was a bit slow, but it was on a yielding track. And uh, she got the upper hand late to beat Glamour's. I thought it was a good effort. Um, so, seven and ten to fight it out. But then there are some first timers and Horses receiving three kilograms from them. I thought it could get more open than that. Okay, but uh, let's uh, confirm what uh, is going to see us in the PA or through the first leg of the PA two and seven. And uh, we have the same banker as in uh, the uh, bipod in uh, leg number four. That is race number five. That is the three. And that is a V-ounce bomb. It's an outlay of 480 Rand. Race two is off at five past one. Distance for race three, the first leg of the uh, pick six on Sunday at Hollywood Bets. A gravel will be over the 1,400 meters. It's a Grunewald, a Kurt, a Pile, Paul, a maiden plate. And that is a race number three, where the favorite is a three. Bad to the bone. What a name. Three to one. Seven to two is a number 10, a gorgeous dude. The five uh, moon harvest is at a uh, five to one in from six to one. So whilst the others have drifted, this one has been nibbled at the five. And then you're looking at uh, eight to one and uh, better bar those. Moon harvest has had its fair share of uh, chances. 60, 15 runs, it'll be the 16th attempt. I guess the Richard Fourie factor and the cheek uh, blinkers being on uh, would be an influence. Yes. Uh, firstly, let me just state, Cecil, the form on offer here is very average. Yeah. And... I'm a little bit concerned in that there hasn't been money for bad to the bone. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how strong he, he is. If you have a look at the front of the computer form, there is a comment for bad to the bone. And it says, big horse and will come on with this run. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that's a very positive comment from the yard. Okay. So now I want to ask you something. Have a look who the dam is of Bad to the Bone. Bad to the Bone is Ignition Lady. I was trying. Yes. I didn't have a chance to actually look up the pedigrees. Please that, educate us. That is Big Burn's brother. Uh -huh. Half-brother. Oh, yes. Big Burn. Big Burn. Catch 22. Uh -huh. So he is extremely well-related, yet there's no money for him. And that's which... the family that did well for Paul Peter. Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. So let's see how he goes. Uh, doing time will be thereabouts. He's, he's average and he's got experience. Moon Harvest, the same can be said. Uh, probably the horse that's got the most scope for improvement is number 10, Gorgeous Dude. He stayed on. Yes. I think he's going to appreciate the extra 200 meters. But in saying that, that wasn't a strong field whatsoever either. But the same can be said about this field. So he's going to make natural improvements. Watch out for number eight over here, Chili Cha Cha. Yes. He's having his third run off the rest and gelding. Uh -huh. Last time out, he was over racing in the early stages. Don't be surprised to see Muzi take the bull by the horns and go to the front on him, and he should run an improved race. 
I don't know what to make of uh, race number three, Cecil. Perhaps uh, Mr. Burrows may have uh, the answers uh, for us. Uh, race number three, how do we uh, navigate? We've got the advantage of uh, four first-timers. So uh, the, uh, unra the race horses will play a big part in that first leg of the pick six. Well, Cecil, um, number, <clears throat> number 10, Gorgeous Dude. Uh, obviously, the improver in the race, staying on four lengths of Gorgeous Guy. Uh, started at any price on debut, drawn out deep. Um, I'm hoping that he can get it right because I've only gone three and ten in the pick six. I included the first timer because I thought he doesn't have to be too good to win number three, bad to the bone. He's very well related. Um, and I think this is the right trip because he is a Rafif out of a speedy damn line. So I think uh, debuting over 1,400 could be ideal. And uh, he's going to rate the horse to beat over number 10. Uh, just the interesting runner in the race could be Evie's Horizon, number 11. Now, this horse debuted for Peter Musket in the nursery in Cape Town behind Winter Cloud. And obviously, something went terribly amiss because he hasn't been seen for one year. So, you don't know how he's doing. He's opened up 9 to 1. He hasn't moved in the betting but uh, if you're playing wider, maybe include him if there's market supports. Currently, I've only gone 3 and 10 in the exotics. Right, let's confirm that exotic. It is the uh, last time out at uh, Hollywood Bets Grey. We're just correct. We were, as uh, Darren pointed out before race uh, two, that it was Wednesday when that 40,000 rand came our way if we had followed uh, Darren's uh, pixel suggestion. Three and ten unraced and uh, raced. That is uh, three and ten. And then at the back, it is that field. And an outlay of 4,800 rand. You've got to be on that uh, pick six uh, by a time of uh, 13 or 40, 20 to two. All right, let's uh, move on uh, to our next uh, challenge. That is the first leg of uh, the first jackpot, and we're still in maiden company. This is the Ngobo, Nangano, and Makolo Jennifer, 1,400-meter uh, maiden plate. It is a field of uh, 10, and no scratchings have uh, come through. Blinkers are on the seven. Professor Lupin, who comes off a uh, gelding and a stable change, formerly with uh, Mr. Vaughan Marshall in the Western Cape, now with Alison Wright. And uh, that will tell you the most likely that the owner is Mr. Rakesha Sugulam, indeed. Four very good runs and uh, certainly would be one for that uh, shortlist. Or is that the case? Let's uh, confirm uh, with uh, Mr. Marie. Number seven, Professor Loop informs some of your selections. He does, Cecil, but, um, you know, this was, <laughs> he let me down so many times. I mean, he's only had four runs and he's probably let me down on three occasions mm -hmm. uh, because we all thought he, he put in a fair debut and he should have won by now. But, you know, he does return as a gelding. And take note, he's been fitted with a set of blinkers. So I don't know if that means he's lost or he doesn't have any early toe, but uh, the blinkers do go on. So that could make a difference. And obviously, he could have benefited from the time off and the gelding. So I think you have to have respect for him. I do believe he does bring the strongest form into the race. But I think he does have a few question marks. So I opted to go numbers one and three as my top two. But I do have respect for two, um, which two, seven, and eight. Now, number one, I thought um, it was a very, very poor local debut for his yard. Uh, it wasn't a strong field whatsoever. And you can see he made good improvements in his second start. That form line is also questionable. It did it get Frank, though, yesterday. It got Frank yesterday with, with the uh, old um, McClendon. Pass well. Platinum. That's right. And yeah, he's obviously traveling. Uh, fits in well having his peak run and I think he could also appreciate the extra 200 meters so peak run well drawn uh, I think in a moderate lineup he is one to be taken seriously and then number three Tibbet's Bork or Tibbet Bork now that form line was franked with Send Me winning from there and he's going to strip fitter this time around Richard from a neat draw can see in his penultimate start that Attaboy for form certainly holding up. So I went numbers one and three, like I said, but respect for two, seven and eight. All right. And Mr. Burrows, how do you see race and number four? The uh, seven, Professor Lupin is your current favorite at around a 28 to 10. In fact, the favorite marginally is the one trip he's tuned at the last uh, time of looking five to two and then 28 to 10 about the seven. Profe Professor Lupin, how do you see race number four, sir? 
Well, I've only included numbers three and seven. Um, you know, number one, yes, he's improved with the Peter Stable after running two dismal races in PE. Um, but I think those form lines are very suspect, even though they are high fault form lines. Um, Tibbet Burke, my first choice. Uh, that fifth to Attaboy, we saw multiple winners. Last time I didn't stay the mile, was just found wanting the final 200. The drop in trips ideal, Richard Fauré. He's going to be given every chance and he could get his head in front. Professor Lupin, been disappointing. It wouldn't surprise me to see him win by three lengths, but it also wouldn't surprise me to see him run a dirty third. So I'm put one and th I mean, three and seven only in the pick six and the jackpot. Three and seven, that is uh, the way of uh, Mr. Burroughs. Let's confirm here's the jack for three and seven. Again, uh, two horses in that uh, second leg. That'll be three and eight. Vihan's a bomb and the eight uh, being uh, Agamemnon in uh, race number five. It's an outlay of 260 Rand and that uh, fourth race is underway with the running of a maiden plate at uh, 14.15. Okay, so we are moving on with our programming. It is, of course, an eight-race program, so we get straight into the second jackpot with race number five. This is a Stian Camp Maria and a Ziban Tolagiele maiden plate. It's over the 2,300 meters, and your current favoritism in a race number five lies with the Raider, formerly based in the province, back there after one run. Very good run on the high field, Agamemnon. Tony Peter tra raids with Agamemnon, 18 to 10. 2 to 1 is the 3 Vions bomb. 11, a rainbow of roses is at 9 to 2. We start with you, Mr. Burrows, a field of 11. And how do you see this a maiden plate? Quite a few maiden plates, and uh, they certainly pose a challenge and a bit of a conundrum. Yes, um, you know, these staying races can throw results, especially in the maidens. But I've excluded Rainbow of Roses because that form line behind only a poet. There was a bunch of horses that ran on top of each other for the placings. And I'm not keen on that. So I've only gone three and eight. Vion's Bomb, up in trip for the first time. Uh, stayed well over the 1900. Could appreciate the 2300. Um, I think he'll start favorite race time, even though he's two to one now. But Agamemnon, his first run back uh, for the... Well, first run for the Tony Peter stable after a year off the race course. And he was staying on all the way to the line over 2,600 meters behind a filly that we're going to see a lot more of over the staying trips, Cadizora. So I'm not excluding his chances. I think he's improved. Uh, three and eight to fight it out. I've only included those two. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Marie. Uh, Agamemnon, good to see those colours back in circulation. Advocate Nigel Riley's colours, and he was at the course for Agamemnon's run and uh, certainly did strike a picture in the parade ring. In fact, even overtowering as far as looks uh, the eventual winner in Fasol winner Casadora. Yeah, not for me, unfortunately. Okay. So, um, I can't believe the price of the of Vion's bomb. Okay. You said two to one. Uh, let me go back. It is two to one, whereas uh, the eight uh, Agamemnon, maybe it's the uh, Highfield uh, form line uh, bias yeah. that, that uh, may just influence the uh, bookmakers at this stage. I, I, I think Vion's bombs an even money shot. Okay. And I think he'll trot up. You know, last time I had Cecil, you can see he made his debut over 1400, the 1200 far too short, yes. put away, came back, rested and gilded. He needed that start. And then last time out, he was just beaten by... A great ride by Richard Free. I don't know if you recall that uh, no, uh, that, race, that race, but everything was running, uh, winning from the front. Yes, it was a howling tailwind. Richard went to the front on the same ownership, Future Saints. Yes, he slowed it down, and he came into the straight and he skipped. And this was did extremely well to get okay. close to a length. Mm -hmm. uh, at the at the line and being out of a Galileo mare, I think he's going to love the step up in trip. Uh, Agamemnon last time out he had things on a plate up front and Cadizora beat him. I don't I don't know how strong that form is, but I really think Vion's bomb is going to go through uh, the divisions. He is going to win a few races as a handicapper. So for me, I'll be shocked to see him get beat. You know, two to one, I'm, I'll be lumping on. 
number three, Vian Zobong. Confidence once again from Mr. Marie about his selection and he has been in very confident mood, both him and Mr. Burrows, and rightly so. Let's have a look at our latest potential winner. That is a 2-1, Vian Zobong. That is race number five, a maiden plate over the 1400 and we should be underway at 10 minutes to three. Okay, very open looking race number six, Ramnana Dupasada Matabadal, Kishora, Phillies and Mares, 85 handicap. It's over the 1400 meters. And your favorite is currently showing at nine to two, having eased out from four to one. And that is the five sovereign grant, Mike Miller and uh, Mr. Tristan Gordon. Five to one out from nine to two goes the 12 of Fabulous. The seven Lucky Miss, seven Green Lucky Miss, seven to one, eight to one about the six of Bitcoin Baby. Number 10, Eisning, what's 10 to one is now eight to one, nine to one, the one Epic View. And then a couple of runners, or several runners, the 10 to 1 numbers, 2 Malcolm's Dream, the 3 Imperious Destiny, and the 9 Twinkle Little Star. But let me come over to Darren, and you'll find I went through the betting quite some way down, because I think some way down is where we'll be getting our selection from Mr. Marie. But your thoughts on race number 6? Uh, I'm not of much help in this race, Cecil. I've included 10 of the 13 runners in the pick 6. The only horses I haven't put in are Stormy Choice, piece by piece, and a horse like she can. So the, the the winner could come from any of the other 10. I even put the field in the jackpot because it wasn't a costly perm. Okay, so that is the way. So it is in your lap, uh, Mr. Marie, uh, to uh, work out uh, the uh, way or work us through the race number six. 1,400 meters once again is the trip. But I know, and I did say that I went through the betting in uh, some detail because you've got something, again, of good value. I believe she does represent some value. Number two, Malcolm's dream. Now, Cecil, um, she needed a comeback start. Then in a penultimate start, she won with a bit in hand. Uh, last time out, if you recall the race, there was a fully uh, Valeria's dream. She was crawling up front. She yes. was nearly walking. And this, this uh, mare was over racing terribly. So I'm of the opinion that she, you can just blind through that run. Um, if she settles in running, you're going to get a good run for your money. Each way, 10 to 1, uh, it can't, you can't get hurt. Um, but the race certainly doesn't stop there. Uh, Epic View and Sovereign Grant, nothing separating the two of them. You can say Sovereign Grant was unlucky in her last start. She was hanging and she cost herself. Uh, lucky Miss, um, unfortunate with the draws recently. If she can go a little bit handier, she's an honest, honest mare. Is she a mare? Yeah, she's um, a man, five-year-old now. Yeah, That's why and I then, Evergreen. Yeah, and then Fabulous. I mean, this is her favorite track and trip. She's unbeaten. So, uh, two, my first pick, but it is tricky thereafter. Tricky, as uh, emphasized by Mr. Burrows. Let's confirm that uh, Daryl is going at the each-way route in a race number six, and that is over the 1,400 meters of Phillies and Mares 85, and that is the two Malcolm's Dream, Malcolm's Dream is uh, the uh, selection of four race uh, number six as we progress through to the penultimate race number seven. Malcolm's dream, that is the two looking for that uh, fifth win from 18 outings. And that is the uh, selection on the screen. So that is the way of uh, race number six. You can uh, use that to anchor your first leg of the last possible pick three at Hollywood Best Gravel where we're racing on the turf. Right, it is the race number seven over the thousand meters. It's um, Nungadi Wiseman and uh, Maharaj Pilamati. Phillies and Mares, a 92 handicap. They're going over the thousand meters. Uh, race number seven is one of our bigger fields on the afternoon at 13 runners. And it is the eight that tops the boards. It is Tinny Prince Lou teaming up with Richard Furry with the eight, a bomber girl who's just been shortened in from four to one to 15 to four. Six to one are numbers one, uh, Sabatini, and uh, the ten captains, uh, Christie. Seven to one and uh, better bar those. Now, the ten uh, captains of uh, Christie, as a two year old, uh, certainly wasn't a slouch. And I remember, I think it was Gold Cup Day, ran a cracker over race to end the season. Yes, uh, Cecil, that's, that run actually makes me favor her, yeah, because that was over 1200. Bianca Calamarito, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And she absolutely cruised through the field on that occasion. Um, she looked the winner, and then Keller Moretta and Muzi and he came back to grab her on the line. So I think a thousand meters at Gravel. She just needs a little bit of luck from from the draw, but she needs cover too. 
So she'll be doing her best work late. I like her chances. But if you have a look at the replay of rapid fire last time out, this filly or this mare was probably uh, one of the most unluckiest losers you'll ever see. Uh, she got done at the start. She had to switch out and she was low flying. She should have really won on that occasion. Um, in saying that, Cecil, uh, she has been quieter to run since then. Uh, she was taken out. I think the reason been was a bruised deal or something uh, I would have preferred her up the straight uh, but you know with 49 to shoulder off the same rating she has oh no, a two pound penalty mm -hmm. um, she has to be competitive off a 78 uh, and I'm sure Brevin would like to get it right this time around so uh, I don't believe the race tops there I think you have to consider the likes of Sasha away maquette Bomber Girl, who's changed ownership. I think she now races in Sterling Miller's Silks. And Captain Christie, who's my first pick. So, 10 from 5, respect for 6, 7 and 8. Okay, so worth, the, uh, worth noting that the uh, 8 uh, Bomber Girl is now under new ownership. Let's cross over to Mr. Burrows. It's a 13 runner field, our biggest field thus far. And uh, your thoughts, uh, it, uh, Mr. Marie, signing with the 5 Rapid Fire yourself. What would you be signing with here? Uh, rapid fire. Now it all depends on how she starts the race. They're going to go quick over the thousand. I don't want to be to be a slow away and cramped early because then she's going to be on the back foot, and that's my concern. Uh, it all depends on how the apprentice gets her out. If he can get her into midfield or just um, handy, um, I think she'll run away from them with 49 kilos in the closing stages. But it all, you'll know your fate after the first 200 meters of the race. That's why I've suggested a place bet, because I think she'll run on into the money. Now, dangers. Maquette, um, her rating has gone up. It's not going to be easy this time around. And she seems better at Scottsville. Bomber Girl, the drop-in trip, could suit. Um, she's in form. Richard Faree takes the ride. Captain's Christie must have a chance. I always thought this filly was a thousand meter horse, and I like that they're dropping her in trip. And then Red Roses too got ability on her day. So let's hope Rapid Fire can get into a striking position and that she can run on late. Right. So Darren has confirmed which way he's going in a race number five, and they seem to be in agreement. But it is, of course, the first 200 meters which will seal or break the deal with the rapid fire. That is a place bet in a race number seven and currently trading at a seven to one. That is the first leg of the last five, the last double rather. So you can anchor rapid fire or throw in one or two more to just support rapid fire.